When I look back at the healing and freedom journey and the beginning stages of it, and and many people who I talk to that are embracing their journey of mental, emotional, relationship, wholeness, they want to experience greater healing from trauma and pain and emptiness in, in their life and journey. They want to have a better relationship with God themselves and others. Can be very easy to get overwhelmed, right? And you can often say, where do I start? Where do I begin? I feel like I'm all over the place. I feel like uh, I'm listening to this here and there. Mark, where do I start? Where do I begin? And if I was to look at my journey and those who I've seen have had dynamic experiences in their healing and freedom journey and have learned a lot, one of the first things I would want to share with you and encourage you in as far as where to start and how to begin operating in this new pathway is actually a really simple one is to slow down. I'll tell you, you want to live the healing and freedom journey. You want better relationships. You want greater mental health, emotional health. You're going to have to learn to slow down. It sounds so simple, so simple yet so profound. It could actually pass you right by. You might think, nah, it's got to be something else. No, 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 that's not it. That's not it. Slowing down is one of the most important things, especially in this day and age, that we need to learn to embrace. It takes time, it takes practice to develop, but it brings our minds into a much healthier rhythm so we can begin to receive and process what we actually need in the healing and freedom journey. But if you look around, what do you see? Constant resistance to slowing down. Slowing down can look problematic. It can look like something's wrong with you. You don't know what you're doing. In fact, if you look at the life of Christ, you'll see in many ways where his rhythm frustrated even the people of their day in the timing that they wanted and what they demanded from him and what they pulled from him. He was constantly disrupting their time frames. And in a day and age like today, where it's all about hustle, it's all about getting stuff done, achieving, the drive for more, the drive for results, and we need them as soon as possible. In the midst of that, we can miss the rhythm of heaven. And God's heart for us in the journey of actually living a slower life. And I want to encourage my brothers and sisters that in your healing and freedom journey, many of you are saying yes to, you know what? I got to slow this down. Now, as soon as you start doing that, you're going to feel resistance. All kinds of stuff kicks up. And I actually believe worldwide there is a demonic force that is seeking to just keep people busy especially in many achievement-oriented countries where there's lots of development and technology, the rate of speed increases, we feel like we can do more, so then we add more, and the, the, everything just gets ramped up more and more. And I believe the enemy knows that a speedy heart is going to struggle in the long run to connect, connect to God, connect to themselves, and connect to other people. I remember back when I was First learning about anxiety, this is way back. And I remember reading a book where the author wrote this statement, something to the effect of, we were meant for camel travel. And I thought that was a really profound statement. It made me think that while my life and even the way I travel, I'm so used to getting instant results and getting things quickly that my body, my physiology was actually made for a slower journey where I take in the steps, I take in the path. I take in the environment because we're so focused on where we're going. We don't realize it's about the here and now of the journey and each step you're taking. For, for so many of us, it's like, oh, where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? And we're on this treadmill, spinning our wheels, moving a lot, doing a lot of stuff, sweating. And at the end of the day, we're kind of still in the same spot. I want to encourage you to slow down. And there are some things that are that that are, are important to be aware of this, and I'm going to share a few of those with you today. Pray they're a blessing to your life. Slowing down, first of all, it moves you to the pacing of the life of the heart. I want you to know, because many of you struggle with saying, man, I know God's love in my head, but I, I feel like I don't have it in my heart. Well, one of the ways we can start experiencing a greater dimension of connection to God is slowing down, because slow helps us to get more to the rhythm of, of the heart. The heart, the physical heart might beat fast, but the spiritual emotional heart is slow. 
The mind can get pushed at rapid speeds. It works at the speed of data. And that's why in today's technological data-driven world, we try to push ourselves to the speed of like computer processing speed. But then we don't have meaningful connections. We don't experience greater healing. We feel so far from God. And we just want to stay at that high pace, thinking that somewhere in that God will just at high speed work at the speed we want him to work at. Slowing down is going to help me. And many of you that struggle with mental health, emotional health, it's going to be really important that you, str- that, you, that you slow down because the pace of life is working, actually working against you. The second thing I want to bring out is high-speed busyness is only going to increase anxiety, worry, stress, and burnout. And many people that have depression in their lives, that have uh, OCD, have perfectionistic tendencies, have anxiety, panic attack issues, I want to first look at the rate of speed. Because high-speed living is addicted. We can get very addicted to the rush of daily doing, doing. And what I find is we often ramp up the speed of our life to match the anxiety we feel. And many people say, when I slow down, I feel anxious all of a sudden. And I have to remind them, the anxiety was there. You just ramped up your life to create a buzz so you didn't have to deal with the anxiety. Most importantly, I think that slowing down encourages us to focus on what God has for us. If you want to learn to hear from God, start by slowing down. He's not in a hurry. God is not in a hurry. Hurry involves stress, and God is not stressed out. Many of us get frustrated with God because we want his timing. We want his pace to be at what we want. We, we get very impatient, whereas God is extremely, eternally patient long-suffering. And the New Testament talks so much about persevering. And so I learn when I slow down, I'm able to focus on what God has for me because then I focus on what's really important and what's really valuable in my life and my journey. Perspective comes back into place. Even those of you, if you struggle with your attention span, you feel like you can't focus, I would coach you to slow down the overall pace of your life. We've become so hypervigilant in how we're trying to deal with this and, 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 and trying to prevent this and control that. Slowing down helps me to focus on what God has for me. And here's the truth. When it comes to focusing in on what God has for me, what he wants me to focus on, it's usually just one thing today. That's it. It may be just you're learning to be loved, Mark, and that's it. And you've got this one thing that is important today. Everything else screams like it's important, but it's not. We want to make it important as though everything's weighing on it. And we like to add and add and add and add to importance. And sometimes we need to take a step back and say, is this really important? Because I find when we release the yoke of all that pressure, we can start to enter into a slower pace. And over time, we begin to develop a new wiring, a new connection to what it means to really connect to what God has for us. Slowing down helps us to recalibrate our stress response. And so many of us have a fight or flight just kicking in constantly. And it needs a recalibration. When you've, uh, those of you who are working through your emotions and you realize, man, I've, I've got some trauma, I've got some neglect in my life, I got some stuff I need to deal with. Your stress response is always going to be kicking in. And you're in this constant, like I said, hypervigilance. And for many of you, the anxieties that you're feeling and the stress and the panics, they're calling out for you to slow down and let God minister to you in his love. And you be able to love yourself. But that busyness and that hyper busy living just blocks that from being connected to. I also know that High-speed living, it can be a form of avoidance. We avoid our pain. We avoid our problems. We avoid God. We avoid ourselves. We just avoid stuff. Well, I just got to stay busy, we say. We just keep going on. But what I found is that's not a loving posture. I would, I would argue that this is a unloving posture to stay busy with no room, no margin, and no slower pace that it's actually a form of hurting yourself. Slowing down is actually an act of love towards yourself. It's nurturing. It says, you know what? Life is important, and I want to stay focused on what's important. 
And I'm just going to take a deep breath and be mindful. Take your time. Slow down. It's all right. This is a process of now being kinder to yourself. Instead of you being your own worst enemy, you're learning to be kinder, more patient, more long-suffering, persevering with your journey. Slowing down helps us to become more present in any given moment. And because of that, I'll actually take in the moment. How many experiences in life do we just go through and we're not really taking them in? We're not really remembering it. We're not really taking in what's happening. We're spinning, we're spiraling, we're just moving. We don't know how to move slowly through to take in life. And I find too that when I learn to slow down and I'm present in a given moment, I see what I need to see. And I take in moments and the beauty that is available in those moments. I'm also going to tell you, for those of you that are like, man, slowing down, it's going to you know, ruin things and productivity in my life. I'd argue that slowing down actually makes you better at your job. And there are studies that prove this. Slowing down will actually help you make better decisions. You have better clarity. Your perspective is going to be sharper. You pay attention to people. Even your job relationships will be more meaningful because you're not just bottom line, get it done, move on kind of personality. Now, those people out there, they may achieve great results that we applaud, but their relationships suffer. Their marriages, their parenting, their friendships, their personal well-being suffer. But I find those who choose, you know what, I'm going to slow down, their energy is better. They're more prioritized. They know how to say yes and say no better because they're not operating at the world's speed demands. And when you stop living at the world's demand of speed, you'll be able to say no to more of the things that pull at you in your life, in your journey. And so I found, wow, when I just take a deep breath and say, take your time, slow down, everything operates much better. A slower life allows us to welcome more and more moments of stopping and pausing. How many of us actually crash land into vacations? You have a day off and you crash land into it and you barely can know which way is left and right while you're just trying to recover yourself and then you didn't even get to appreciate the beauty of a day off. How many of you need a vacation from a vacation that you took? How many of you need time off from time off you took because you just crash landed in it? But when you learn to slow down your overall lifestyle, You can more easily move into moments of pause, moments of quiet, Sabbaths, just moments of rest, margin. You embrace it better because you're not at a high speed race, then crash landing into a stop. You know, we say, I want to slow down before life forces me to slow down. Slowing down really reminds me of who's in charge. Because I tell you what, I have to let go of control issues. I have to let go of of areas in my life that I want to like try to get wrap my hands around. And so in this new posture, I now moved to more a heart rhythm. I'm going to move to the rhythm of the heart and get out of this biz, 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 buzz, 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 buzz. It helped obsessions. It helped pressure. It helped anxiety. But it was tough at first, excruciating. But I knew it's what I needed. But it was an act of love. Because I realized that it was unloving living the way that I did. I mean, everything in my, in my life was going fast. And even I ate fast. Some of you eat too fast. I've had to learn to be mindful, to even slow down. I have to mind, remind myself to this day when I sit at the table to slow down and take in even what I'm eating. Those of you that take my materials, right? You're asking me, where do I start? Where do I start? Where do I start? First... I need to slow down your speed because I could tell you start here and you're going to go through my materials 90 miles an hour. It's not. The things I'm teaching and sharing with you are meant to be marinated on, not microwaved. And many of us are in a microwave process that God has to set us free from. So how do we slow down? Well, it, you, you're going to see, well, it's awkward for me at first. Well, first you need to recognize the long-term consequences of going at the speed you're going at. How's it going to affect your marriage, your parenting, your relationships, your job, your your physical and mental and emotional health? 
How is it going to affect you to continuing at this rate? Come to terms with that. And then what I say is, if you really want to slow down, the value of healing, wholeness, and health is going to have to be important to you. If it's not, then you'll just keep going fast. You'll keep going about your life. You know, killing it at your job will be number one, making that, making that paper, making that achievement. That's going to drive your life. Otherwise, when it's not meaning that you won't make good money or you won't you know, have great things that happen in your life, but the most important things become the most important. And so I want to leave you with this. It really starts with permission and decision. I'm giving myself permission to slow down and I decide I'm going to live a slower pace in life and I'm going to let myself learn. So some of you think, well, I just need a vacation. I, and if you live a fast-paced life, a vacation, a retreat center, going to some uh, place up in the mountains for weeks, or, or you, you might think, oh, that's going to reset me. No, you'll just come right back to your same old life. Make a decision today. I'm going to slow down the RPMs. This term RPMs, it means revolutions per minute. And you might have seen this on your dashboard, where as you hit the gas, the accelerator, it revs up. And the harder you hit that pedal, the harder it, it, it rises up. It's basically the revolutions of going on in the engine and the engine's power. And for many of you, you're redlining on a daily basis. And no one can decide this for you. Now, life is going to send you signals. You're going to get check engine signals coming up. But today, what I want to encourage you in is, is an act of love. To say, you know what? I'm going to slow down. I'm going to pay more attention to what I need to pay attention to because this rate and this speed is working against me. And if you want to take a next step, I encourage you to take the heart healing journey. This is a passionate work of what God has done in my life that I want to share with you to awaken, heal, and transform your life. To be more mindful of the meaningful areas of your life that need processing. If this video is a blessing to your life and your journey, go to markdacius.com, click on the donate button, and I just look forward to continuing to be a brother from another mother to be a blessing to your life and your journey. So Lord willing, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. I'll be back with some more stuff on this because I think it's really important that we live in a new rhythm and new pattern when it comes to living a meaningful life with God from the heart. So till the next time, as long as that creek don't rise, your brother from another will be back. In the meantime, I'm out.